Okay, so on the wrong side here. Oh, I might have to be kind of quick about this because I do need to go around 2.45 latest. So we may, we may not finish this half. Just want to give you guys a heads up. Okay, let's uh, skip through the rounds. I will, I will definitely do that, Resler. I will get the uploads to YouTube, to, to the YouTubes. It's been a long time since I did POV, uh, PV stuff or like did demo reviews. So this is kind of cool doing it like this. Uh, I'll definitely be doing this kind of thing more, more and more. And I would imagine too, that there's a possibility I can do this from my, like I have a, uh, like a 2017 razor blade laptop. Maybe I could do this from a hotel room potentially. It was just a raise, but I don't know if it, it has that kind of capability to stream and but this is pretty like a pretty easy bare bones setup, so okay. Alrighty then. Okay, so continuing the tribute piece to Zaiwu as we go into the T side of Mirage. What is it that makes Zaiwu good? Um, answering one of the questions about like how, how can you decide if a player is good or not? You really do have to, again, I'm just going to quickly touch on this. We, we brought this point up a moment ago. You have to be able to not just look at the statistics, obviously, um, to a certain extent, the statistics are important. Okay. I, you know, th but they always need context. Um, however, what we can do is we can try to go into demos like this and we can, we can set ourselves expectations based on the current scenario or what is reasonably expected of a player of, you know, of, of an elite level, of a top eight level, what can we reasonably expect from every scenario that they're, that they're in? Are they, is, is there like a reasonable level of overperformance? Like, are they operating from what we can establish objectively, maybe create a consensus around, um, if a situation is advantageous or disadvantageous, and then are we seeing them over, like overperforming? And if we factor in, um, you know, things like that and look at it consistently and look at all the decisions consistently and look at, and look at it and say, did, like, did Zyu get extra value from this? Or was Zyu in a bad spot, but he managed to find more value than we could reasonably expect, expect from another professional around, you know, around you know, his level of team? You know, then you can start to put the pieces together and then just seeing how consistently that plays out um, as well as other factors. Obviously, there's many factors in which you want to judge a particular player because um, you also need to know uh, in certain more in, in more isolated instances when we're talking about the guys posted up with an orb, you know, from certain positions, which, you know, where you need to hit orb shots, how consistent, consistent is he there? How much does he over deliver there? What opportunities is he able to also create for his teammates? You know, all kinds of things like this. There's, there's lots of different factors, obviously, but you really do have to go into the demos and, and look at that. Um, and so here we're going to check out the pistol. Um, that's a good point. The 30 FPS. Yeah, that could work out. Um, right, so gonna get a classic B rush into the B sites, and he's the second man in. So Shox is gonna take one in the face, and oh, he's just received one. Oh, what a great pause! Um, so there's not too much to really analyze here. What we could analyze initially is his his path. Um, so we saw that he he comes out, and his path, I think, was like this. Right, it was like this not too much to really go in depth on there is pretty basic stuff so we're just going to enjoy this beautiful freeze frame as i call it a nice moment and then uh we're gonna move on with our lives from this pistol round to so, say <laughs> i don't know like go all crazy in depth on like the route that he took or whatever but but i mean obviously routes are are important um and there's a few different reasons why routes are important. What angles do they open you up to? It's kind of like a fight, you know, like when you, when you're, if any of you have ever done any fighting disciplines, one of the things that's interesting about a fighting discipline is like much like when you take a fight in Counter-Strike, you know, in Counter-Strike, what, what is the strength and weakness of what you're currently using? Okay. You've got a pistol. Um, what in this situation, like what are your weaknesses in this situation? Where are your openings and what area are you happy to have open? Cause you can't, you can't, you know, obviously you're always going to have an opening. So you kind of want to make sure that you have openings you know about. Um, an opening that you know about obviously is much more important than an opening or is it important to have versus an opening where you 
don't know about, which you definitely don't want to have. So you need to always know about your openings. I don't know if I explained that very well, but but often when we're, we're running around in bomb sites, that's kind of how our pathing also needs to like come out. What do we think again is most likely? Where are our openings? Are we okay to have those openings where they are? And so on and so forth. So it's going to be a pistol um, by with, with Kevlar. You know, we get the uh, the force by behind the the bomb, uh, the lack of a bomb going down and and we'll see what they're going to do with it. So, so as I was taking this pixel angle here, he's looking for forward aggression. Now, this is obviously a spot where, like, he's never expecting. He's, he, he's going to try to hit the shot here, obviously, but he's not expecting to hit a shot here. What's, what is really important is to get the information. And uh, we'll see exactly how his teammates are moving around here because that's going to tell us also, you know, some information about what's going on. All right, Hulsberry, I'll catch you later. Thanks for tuning in, man. Appreciate it. Um, so... Okay, I missed that because I was looking at chat. Uh, but we had a shock die. I don't see the... Ah, uh, fuck, where did he die? He got the kill. So it's Chris who just got the kill. Okay, okay. So he died lurking around A. All right, so it, it perhaps seems to be the case that they've decided that the game's being given up here. They're going to decide to just go in. They had to have some utility to use. Okay, so we're going to see some utility from Vitality. Then they're just going to try to bum rush the, the B bomb site. It's pretty tough. It's pretty rough here. You can see that already is a reasonable expectation. If you look at the positioning of mouse bolts, they're already ready for, for a, a, this. This is just one of those really tough situations. You Shocks kind of needed to get a kill or to get something going. They're going to do what they can. There's a nice pick from Apex. That cool smoke does allow them to have less openings. Okay, this is cool because smokes are super... We talked about openings that you want and don't want don't want to have and, and openings you know about and openings that well at this level you should always know what your opening is and they're not really an, an excuse um so this is really cool because that smoke which you don't commonly see and i can't draw behind the smoke for some reason but i'm going to circle around it this smoke this is really cool because the player that's you know they, they've also smoked off um any positions around get right um so this completely denies uh, any passage for the C or any vision from the cts to have towards um, the t's that are coming you know, through to bench and through to the bomb site, which also allows if they if they're able to clear the site and bench, it actually also allows potentially a plant here. So obviously that's useful too. So it's kind of cool to see that smoke. You don't commonly, I don't commonly see it at least. I don't think. I don't know if I'm just not paying attention enough. And look at these tight angles that Zayu can play from. By the way, that was pretty sick. But look at how tight these angles are. He doesn't have to worry about uh, the pillars at all, and the CTs can't reasonably walk through that pillar with the weapons that they have it's a bit risky you don't know what Zyra's going to do you don't know if he's holding the smoke what are you at advantage to do to wait so you you want to wait because he would force him to plant the bomb and the smoke eventually goes away he loses that advantage so on and so forth but he's getting some pretty huge value here the bomb is not really even necessarily a way that he wins this round at all this is so scary because it's freaking Zywu, so <laughs> A little bit worried here, but some good value from that. So I like the way that they dropped that smoke there. I think that, that helped them to create some opportunities with the Deagles. Um, so we're going to move on to the next round. And hope I didn't bleak at the point there. Um, uh, Pino, I'm actually... Um, yeah, I've been living in California for the last... Since uh, December 2019... 2018. 2018. So, yeah, I've been in California for a while now, just over a year. So I'm on that uh, West Coast time zone. So probably another uninteresting rounds um, in terms of what there is to talk about. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, into the, into the next one we go. All right, so now the first buy comes in, and this is cool because we get ourselves an AWP. And again, just want to remind you guys that I will definitely be doing a part two at the at a minimum because I have to go in about 15 minutes and we've been going for an hour and 15 minutes. So solid 90 minutes of analysis talking about Zyru. So the orb. So he decides to go for the fast pick towards the B apartments with the spawn that he had. Now this is really cool as well because if we go over, you know, quick detail about orping. Now, when, when you have an orper, on a map like this, where he could, he could decide to go fast timing mid, fast timing B apps, fast timing towards A ramp. And there's lots of different timings he could take. He could even try to take a timing in Palace, whereby a smoke comes in in the window and maybe a rotation is forced, uh, you know, from the, the window player and, he's, and he, his next position is here. 
uh, or to swing around here. And so he might have that angle because he's got such a fast timing. Like there's lots of different things that are possible um, on a map like this. So that makes it, you know, quite dangerous. Uh, a lot of teams don't uh, to deal with because a lot of teams don't necessarily expect to see an orb straight away. That's why you need to have pre-existing knowledge on the team you're playing so you know what to expect in that sense because that informs you um, as to not take any more aggressive angles because if you go with a rifle for example in like this say these positions you can be in a spot where it's fine you know you're gonna maybe have a reasonably even engagement you're not gonna be against these pixel angles you don't have to worry nearly as much so it's a great it's a great situation to be in in uh in a map like this to have a really good orpo that can just constantly create that fear and he's creating space here for his team if he doesn't have to do this too much but just showing that there can be an orb here is a pretty big value um, that goes beyond the round that he's playing and that's an important thing to think about um so we'll see exactly the style that he approaches this with um so looking for the jump peak and he gets it and this is the strength of this position Carrigan's definitely not necessarily expecting like first gun round orb in b apps and it's sideways he's not missing that shot so now the team's in the b on site this round's probably over right now i mean given the money that mouse sports have they do have another buy kind of in the hole but woxic has an orb it's not really advisable for them to go for this it's five man like five men have survived towards this bomb site so we're going to skip um because they've they've already won this round basically um Indeed they do. So, and we see the save from our sports. Um, uh, one second. I don't know you're going to say all that stuff. So anyway, it's all fine. Nothing confidential going on here. Okay. Uh, back in to the round. So we had that call first buy for him. So again, we, we saw that it makes the play work. That's great. But again, it's more about also what is the impact on the future rounds in terms of positioning for, for the mouse sports team. Now, one way to deal with this is... For, is to bring an orb of your own to the B apartments. That's one thing you can add to the dimension. However, if you do that as a CTs, your orpa, if you only have one, is now here. And this is an issue because if you let's just think about opportunities. Let's think about opportunities um, in terms of you know what is available to to an orpa from here. Obviously, he can hold down B apartments. I guess that's cool. But that's kind of it. <laughs> There's no real other impact that the AWP is going to have in the early to mid rounds. What, like, where is most of the movement for the T's when they're closing distance on the map? It's in the early to mid round, obviously. So if you have an AWP that's able to be window, that's able to be connected, that's able to be catwalk, that's able to be around the A, a you know, the A bomb site or a triple, it can like, you know, peek over here, peek up here, you know, peek into this position, drop down, peek up there. You know, we all of a sudden we have this, we have the ability to be present on the map. If there's stuff happening over here and, you know, the AWP is around middle, you know, obviously he can rotate in. If stuff happens around middle or stuff happens around the A bomb site and you got your only AWP, he's over here, he's not going to be able to have much impact on the, in, in the critical timings when the T's are kind of gaining position. Um, they're, they're moving forwards. Um, that's when you want your AWP to really have the impact. So obviously, it, it, that's, that's going to mean a lot more for your overall chances to win a round if they're getting picks early. So I just so I just want to say that like this is one way to deal with it. We can actually, actually looks like what it may potentially be get going up there or he's going catwalk, but probably likely towards the apps. We'll see. And it looks like, where's I going? Because I was going also to be apps again. So, so just want to like, it's opportunity cost in action. But you can see, I think, did they get the boost there? I'm not sure. He got the fast timing and he gets the pick. That's awesome. What a response from mouse spots. Again, as I mentioned, it's a risk. It's a big, it's a huge opportunity cost to do this. But mouse spots have just showed that they don't give a shit and they're just going to go for it. And so they've taken out Zyrus. So we can kind of, oh, look at these free, I'm, I'm on point on these freeze frames. Look at that. 
So Woxic has probably just won this round. Look at the decisive advantage they have. Again, this is more about Zyri, so we're going to skip into the next one. And 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 that's just how it goes, right? You, you know, you got to roll with the punches as an Orpa. You got to roll with the punches. Sometimes you're going to go for a play, and sometimes that play is going to not work. But you got to be able to take those those risks as an Orpa. So so yeah, that was a, that was a really cool uh, counterplay, and and uh, it was even cooler because. I don't, I do, again, I don't remember a lot of the details of the game, uh, the smaller details round to round. Uh, like I didn't know that Woxic was going to go there this round, but it's cool to see that uh, after highlighting the option, but also what it takes away from the team, you know, you get an overall sense of the picture as to what that play actually means, because it's not just what they're doing with the play, but it's what they're losing by doing that play as well. Like th there's, if, if nobody went B apartments in that round, Woxic again, he's not having impact uh, he's not having impact early into the round, which also means that Vitality get an easier time getting position in their default. If they're running a default, you know, if they're running, you know, mid play or, or a play towards A, it means that mouse bots either have to be more aggressive with the riflers or they have to be more passive. Um, or they have to, one, another, one other thing that you can do is you can just leave the AWPA here and you can just play like a heavy mid setup. So have like two people A and like two on A in the in the early rounds. That's another potential option. They didn't do that though, but that is an option to to, to be more aggressive um, in the center of the map. T take something away that reduces to some of the risk by taking by taking a big risk by taking away map control and getting information, maybe forcing a kill. You're reducing risk from other plays you're making, like isolating your opera in the B apartments. So that's another thing to consider. Um, Okay, so Zyru has gone B apartments again. This is really interesting to see that he's repeatedly going B apps. This time he's much more passive. Now this could be, you know, where mind games start to occur, where, you know, Woxic already has success there, but I'm happy to see Woxic's taken a more regular position towards CT, uh, towards Ticket. So now the question is, you can see that they're set up waiting for a timing, waiting for a push. Again, could be all kinds of reasons to expect this. To think that this is likely but it's not going to happen <laughs> as we can see they don't know but we can see it's not going to happen so we talked about how time on the t-side is a commodity it's something to be invested and whatever you're doing there is an investment whether you like it or not because time ticks away it doesn't give a shit about about you <laughs> time don't care about you it's ticking away regardless so eventually you got to give it up and assess the situation so they develop their b apps opener into mid control and given that mouse bots are playing really passively there isn't really much resistance to this w one of the benefits to playing really passively i'm going to cover this quickly one of the benefits to playing really passively on the ct side is that um oh sorry no on the t side one of the benefits to playing passively on the t side is the fact that the cts well, if they don't have a good read on your game style, and if they themselves haven't shown aggress too many aggressive tendencies, or they're expected, or they know that NORP can be, you know, all over the any anywhere on the map, so they're they're less likely to go for an aggressive play, then you have this situation whereby the CTs will settle into more passive setups, which means like as we just saw at the 50 second mark, it was really easy. They basically just got mid control for basically almost nothing. It was very easy, and I say almost nothing. It did. If you look, if you look at the top up here where the arrow is going the, to the timer, obviously it wasn't nothing. Effectively, it took it was 60 seconds of their time. That's an, again, time is a commodity. So, they're, interestingly, they're deciding to go back here, and the bomb is actually there. So that's, this is kind of. I actually think I vaguely remember this round. I, I think we'll we'll see as it plays out. But someone has to go back for the bomb, and so it's getting a little bit scary here because they, although they had mid map control uh, available to them, they didn't use it, but they kind of took presence there. Now they're just going to go for a burst onto the B bomb site. This is a bit of a hail mary. They didn't get any picks anywhere on the map. They didn't have any positioning. They decided that they would just go and explode on the B bomb site. It's a bit of a hail mary. So I was just holding the market position at this point after getting that initial second frag you can see Zyra is basically always the second guy in because they want him to be able to get the time to react to a position that could be hidden or when the entry fragger walks into a position where he's going to be effectively covered by a multiple like multiple angles could be firing on that guy you need to know which angle it is so I, by the time he uh, his teammate dies knows what that is gets to take the pick we've seen that be somewhat reliable so far in this game 
and now he's going to try to drop into the site. And there's kind of a necessity here. In fact, he's even going to plant because it's not actually safe given the position of shocks to actually uh, peek past the van position because of the fact that um, he would be open to market, of which there is a player currently residing. So Tyro has to be the one to plant. And he's got to be the one to also maybe gain some position here for his teammates. We'll see what he decides to do. They can just hold. So they seem to have a read that someone's coming. Cat, but there is no one cat. That's a... So it could be an interesting problem here. Also, shocks can't see the guy creeping up in apps. So Zyrie's got some issues in this position. Um, and again, like you know, what do you do in this position? You have to, you, you effectively do have to gamble. Your intuition has to take over. And obviously, what your teammates are doing is very helpful. So it looks like Alex will get the pick. So it seems like there was one cat. And now Zyrie can know that he's not going to have to worry about cat. He's not going to have to worry about the apartments because the position he's just gone into, he's, he's, uh, his back is, is in such a way that it's covered by the wall. And now he's just, the only thing that's open is the market position, which, ah, of course, here. Mr. Alex would be able to see. So worked pretty uh, worked out really, really well with his teammates there. And although he dies, you know, it's a pretty effective result. Okay, so I think we only have time for one or two more rounds here before I have to... Uh, go about my merry way. Okay, so... We'll definitely check out the CT side of this one in, like, the second part as well, because, you know, I think CT side Mirage, really interesting for all so many options. I mean, so far, it's just, like, from a macro perspective, it's really interesting to see all the decisions we've had made by Vitality. They've, they've opted to go for us a really... Uh, like they, they've not really been doing mid defaults, so it's it's uh it's really interesting. Uh, this definitely will go up on YouTube as well, Tommy Tiger Fang too. So no worries about that. And just look at it; it's, it's it's such a you don't often see teams go for this. Obviously, they're playing an anti eco, but it's just still a pretty pretty interesting anti eco, honestly. So I don't think there's really too much to say about this one. They just I mean the team just decided to call a uh, call a bal balcony burst on an anti eco. And a full buy, really interesting. Okay. All right, so. Where are you taking us this time, Zoe? We've, we've seen the B apartment so many times. Okay, so gonna get some mid play here. Got the really fast spawn. Going for the peak. So that's that's a really difficult peak. Even though it's left eye versus left eye, the CT with a good spawn does have the position first. Something to remember. The CT can also do a trick whereby, I say a trick, it's not a trick per se, but the CT can, if they have a really good spawn, they can go a bit deeper and then they can play this right eye position um, where it's again on the corner of engagement, it's somewhat similar but your right eye against the left eye swing here. So AWP against AWP is pretty deadly. Can be pretty, if, if you can make it there in time. As I was posting up for the repeat, it's going to get it. It's the, oh dear. Carrigan, Carrigan, Carrigan. Got to know your angles, my friends. <laughs> that's, that's a funny one. So this round's kind of over. There's two AWPers left. I don't know there's too much left to say about this one. The team just has to kind of go together towards the site at this point. Nothing else that they really need to do to win the round. Obviously, there is still some danger in the double orbs, and it is mouse sports, and it's Woxic and Chris J. So, I mean, interestingly, I think one of the the cool things that we've seen of we've been able to notice in quick review of the uh, the of the hour and a half of Counter Strike we've been looking at is that a lot of Zyrus play is is fairly simple in terms of. The decisions that he's making he's generally making just he's just making good consistent decisions i think a lot of credit does also have to go towards his team that of course do set him up but you know what this is the reason why we're doing uh, we're doing a uh uh we're doing more parts to this side with story because you know he's the hltv ranks one player 2019 you know best rookie performance of anyone maybe ever in counter-strike maybe you know other esports titles as well it's got to be up there incredible player so I really want to kind of get a bigger and wider sense of his identity. And, you know, we've seen, I think, the what the baseline looks like for Zaiwu. Consistent player, looking for the most efficient choices. Very team play oriented. You can, you can tell that he's always thinking about his teammates, what his teammates are doing, how his teammates can improve his chances, how he can improve his teammates' chances, how his teammates set him up. 
And it, it creates what is, you know, when you break it down, actually a very simplistic and logical chain of events in terms of what he's doing on the map. So, right, I think I think we've, uh, we'll, we'll see how this round opens up because I don't know if it's going to be a lot to go into or not. And if, if it is, we'll leave you in a cliffhanger and we'll, we'll kind of leave off on the, on, the, on the point and kind of pick it up later. But he is taking a different position here towards the A ramp and obviously someone's going across the connector. And again, given the fact that this is the first time he's doing this, it's pretty late into, into it. We've only seen him in mid and B apps really. He's not done this yet. Someone running across bench might actually feel very safe. So, which it wouldn't be, but obviously it's also an anti-eco. So not really too much to say. He's just covering that rush. There are like cheeky flash plays you can do as a T CTs in this position to kind of deal with anybody holding like that. But ultimately, mouse will be spread out. And I think, uh, yeah, I know Tommy Tucker Fang is, it is a bit of a robbery, isn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, but such is e the nature of esports, I suppose, as it's so young. Um, obviously, you know, Booger's amazing for what he accomplished, but, you know, it's unfortunately not really comparable and, and you know, Fortnite as an eSport, you know, it's, it's just a, that's a whole, you know, don't want, we shouldn't get into that right now. Obviously that's a discussion to be had. And I think Counter-Strike obviously has a professional circuit. Players are playing like so many tournaments, so many games in such an extremely elite level, an extremely competitive environment, having to deal with all sorts of outside pressures uh, as well. Um, whether that be travel or whether that be, you know, whatever it is. So yeah, it's, won't go into that too much. Uh, but thank you everyone for tuning in. I've uh, got some decent viewership on this one and I'll be uploading the VOD to YouTube. I will be back um, in the in the near future to do more stuff like this. So if you like it, um, you know, just let me know. You can find the YouTube VOD if you want to look at something else or if you wanted to leave a comment there. Um, you can also, if, if you subscribe to YouTube as well, I'll be making more content like this. And whilst you guys are here, for those of you that have seen any of the kind of performance musing videos that I've done and uploaded to YouTube, which have been from the stream, um, I know. Um, then what you can do is just ask me uh, questions either on those videos or Twitter or whatever it is. And I, and I, when I kick up a stream, I might have one of those questions in mind. I might just go over it and then I can, you know, continue to throw those uh, videos out there. Cause that is all performance based stuff. So if you are someone that's trying to get better, you have a leak in your game or something you're concerned about, or how do I improve this or that? Feel free to ask those questions. I'd love to nerd out about those and I'll make some content around it. So, um, also, remember that the Jared Tendler podcast released today with T as Team Liquid Sports Psychologist, extremely accomplished sports psychologist, perhaps the, the most uh, accomplished sports psychologist in esports. Um, he's incredible. The way he talks about it is incredible. His list of clients and people that he has helped, and he himself was an elite level golfer, just incredible individual. Very much recommend you guys listen to that if you were interested in the mental game um, behind performance. So that is now me signing off. Thank you very much. Um, ladies and gents, and I will see you guys later.